it's alarming that they're not signed at this point. And I know Scott Boris will tell you, well, these guys are training at my training institute. They're fine. They're doing everything a normal pitcher in spring training would do. Throwing bullpens, live batting practice. No, they're not performing in game-like situations. Let's bring in Ken Rosenthal right now, FT Senior Insider, joining us. Ken, good to see you, and I heard that you were at Braves camp today. So let's start there because we're going to talk to Alex Anthopoulos later. How did it go? Does this look like a 150-win team? (laughs) 150 (laughs) might be a little bit excessive, but they're going to be good. And the biggest takeaway for me is Chris Sale. They're very excited about Chris Sale. Clearly, he has to stay healthy, and we know that. But he is healthy right now. He's throwing the ball well. And one of the players said to me this morning, let's say you're in a best-of-five division series, and you've got Max Fried and Spencer Strider throwing the first two games. And no matter how that turns out, Chris Sale's going game three, a healthy Chris Sale. If that comes to pass, and if he is the guy he once was, or even close to that, it's a very interesting rotation. They've also added Aaron Bummer to the bullpen. They're just really strong. And I know Kellenic has struggled so far, but there are people here who are high on him as well. There is no reason to believe this team will be anything other than a powerhouse again. Hey, Ken. Um, love what you do, big dog. Good to see you again. Um, Thanks. Question for you. Ronaldo Lopez. Excuse me while I jump into this frame here. Ronaldo Lopez. I'm, I'm, I'm just intrigued by this guy here, man. He's, he can be a starter. He can be a reliever. He's a guy that they're going to look for a lot during the season. I feel like they got a steal there with him if he's healthy and rearing back and throwing the, you know, in the high 90s, 100 range. Where do you see him finishing off? Do you see him as a fourth, fifth starter, or do you see him as a reliever right now? Todd, I'm glad you mentioned him because I neglected to when I was talking about their additions, and he was the first, and he's a big one. I don't know where I see him. I don't know that they know where they see him just yet because they're stretching him out as a starter. That was the intent when they signed him. But they know that he can become a dynamic, multi-inning part of their bullpen as well. So either way, he represents great depth for them. Right now, they can really turn it either way. depends kind of on Bryce Helder, how he performs, and some other things as well. But man... They are just in a really deep position. They have some younger pitchers as well. A.J. smith Trevor, we saw him last year. I just kind of like where they are. Obviously, we know how good they are. They've been so good for so many years under Anthopolis. But this team maybe has a little bit more depth than some of the others before, and that's what's intriguing to me. Is there a sense in camp that they have to change something from – making the team making you know winning all these games and making the playoffs and now we have to figure out how to win in the first round or is it just eh, whatever we're good that hasn't really been a topic that came up in my conversations with players today maybe i should have asked eric maybe you should be the reporter and i should be just sitting there (laughs) in your seat but (laughs) i don't get the sense that they do feel that way now if they win the division again and if they get a bye again and they're sitting there looking at a layoff like they did last year and the last couple of years. You've heard Brian Snicker say this spring, "Uh, it's not ideal. Well, they're going to have to figure out a better way. Obviously, they're going to need to maybe have more serious simulated games. I don't know what they were doing before necessarily. They were doing simulated games, but I don't know how intense they were. It's a challenge. And it's interesting because when I was in Philly's camp, I will tell you that the remarks by Snicker did not necessarily get received well because they felt, hey, we won the series, we beat them, that's the way it is. We would have rather had the bye. All guys want rest at at that time of year. But I do understand the other side of it as well. We've seen teams get knocked out with byes in recent years, some very powerful teams, a couple of times with the Dodgers. It's not an easy thing to pick it back up again, but one point that a certain Phillies player made to me was, hey, all-star break, it's the same amount of time you're off and nobody complains then. So they're going to have to figure it out if it gets to that point, and I'm sure they'll be delighted if it does. Hey, we talked about uh, Gavin Lux a little bit earlier today about how he's trying to get back uh, playing-wise. They said he's our shortstop. Dave Roberts came out and said that now. A little backtrack a little bit. Um, is it one of those cases where he needs to get acclimated a little more? They need to see him throw the ball better as we talked about earlier is it just something where they're just like 
well, maybe we need to ease off the gas pedal a little bit. So talk to us a little bit about Gavin and what you think uh, might transpire there. It's clearly a shift in what they've been saying. Initially, he was the shortstop. He's going to be the shortstop. He'll be our guy opening day. And now it's we're not so sure. And the reason they're not so sure is because he seems to have a case of the yips again. And this is one of the most baffling things in baseball when this happens to a player. And I always go back to what Tim Kirkchen told me when I was starting my career. I've mentioned this before. This game is really hard to play. And I know people might think, well, the yips, come on, just throw the ball. It gets inside guys' heads. And Gavin Lux at one time was one of the game's best prospects. He still has a world of ability, and he still is someone that people on other teams tell me they believe he's going to hit. But he has to be able to hold down the position. Now the question becomes, what if they turn away? Where will they go? They've got Miguel Rojas. He's a shortstop. They've got Kike Hernandez, who, when healthy, might be able to play the position from time to time. But I would expect they would explore some other options. And we've talked about Willie Adamas with them forever. My understanding of that is that while the Dodgers might want Willie Adamas, the Brewers don't necessarily want to trade Willie Adamas. So there's always a price. You guys know that for every player. But right now, it just seems they're going to have to see what happens with Lux over the next couple of weeks and then maybe go with Rojas and Kike to start the season and figure it out as they go along. It's a tough, tough spot for him, but hopefully he comes back. Uh, you and you and Eno wrote a great article about pitching injuries. Now we talk about this all the time, and I know, as every team knows, injury time on the IL is the largest cost of any team because you lose all that time with these pitchers. Do you feel like your sense of all that you guys dug into, and you can hit on so many other things, but do you feel like your sense? of teams is closer to the aspect of we don't want to get guys hurt because you interviewed the Rays in this too, or it's we want to get the most out of guys because you can't be 50-50 right down the line. Right now, Eric, there's no question that teams lean toward performance more than availability. They want to use these guys. They want them to throw as hard as they can for as long as they can and come what may. That's the problem, actually that pitchers are not backing off in any way. They are going full out all the time. And Dr. Keith Meister, who we interviewed for this story, he's the Texas Rangers team physician, the leading orthopedic surgeon, one of them in the game today. He cited the sweeper and the power change as particular problems. He says pitchers grip the ball with a death grip now, and they're trying to max out every pitch. That's the issue. And at some point, some teams are going to have to figure out a better way because we see this every single year. Pitchers go down, and it's not for any one reason. It's for a variety of reasons. Maybe the answer, and we allude to this in the article a little bit, is for people or pitchers and teams to start focusing more on location than just pure stuff. We know pure stuff has incredible value. It's what gets great hitters out. But as Eric Neander said in the article, location can make up for some of that loss of effectiveness with the stuff if you are really good with that and maybe the art of pitching needs to come back a little bit more so that these guys aren't going down all the time i will say this and i didn't mention this in the story but not only hard throwers get hurt not only pitchers who throw sweepers and power changes get hurt all pitchers get hurt it's an <laughs> industry-wide problem mlb is conducting a study right now they've interviewed more than 100 people so far, and eventually they plan or they expect to form a task force. We can talk all we want, and we have talked. They've had people on this for a while now. They're trying, but behaviors have to change. And I don't know how you legislate that. It almost seems like it has to happen organically within organizations for teams to say, okay, we're going to look for something a little bit different here. We're going to stress availability to get back to your question, Eric, as much as performance. And it's funny that <clears throat> availability, you know, turns into all of a sudden the velo. It's like, that's probably, that's one of the reasons why I didn't, I don't play anymore because of velo, because of the nasty movement, because of how hard guys throw. Now, if that was the case, me and Kratz, you're going to have to come in my cage here and work out a little more. I don't see that happening, 
But my question to you is about Tommy John surgeries. Um, used to be you get Tommy John, you're good for the rest of your career. Now in the article which you've written, all of a sudden now guys are getting Tommy John. The next thing you know, instead of 10 years down the road, maybe three to five as, as we've seen, they got to get another one. So what, what is that about? Is that because of velocity? That was a direct quote, Todd, that you're referring to from Dr. Keith Meister. That's what he said. It used to be you get one, then it was one every 10 years if you need a second one, and then it was seven to eight, then it's three to five, which is where it is now. It's all of the above when it comes to trying to figure out what the reason is. Velocity is certainly one aspect of it. Also, the breaking pitches, more are being thrown than ever before, and as I go back to the grip and the way pitchers grip them, there's more strain on their arms than ever before. So I would say when it comes to trying to figure out the cause, the best answer is all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good one. Ken, so I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. What stands out to me is the average lifespan in a big league career for a pitcher. Under 2.7 seasons. Well, the major league average salary is sub a million dollars. These dudes spend their whole lives getting to this point. They might shine for a few years and then their arm breaks and they disappear. So how do you think the players, the talent, uh, evaluate a situation like this that you know keeps turning into players with shorter shelf lives and not actually getting to be millionaires for being the best in the world at this sport, which is a whatever, $15 billion sport? Well, Scott, if you're a pitcher and your career is lasting an average of under 2.7 years, the average pitcher is not even getting to arbitration. That's alarming. And yet, we refer to this in the story as well. Most pitchers view injuries as an occupational hazard, and they kind of accept that this is part of it. And Alex Cobb is quoted at the end of the article as saying, I've had every surgery you can imagine, but I got to the big leagues. And that's the trade-off that occurs. Now, you hate to hear that from any player. No one wants to see any player hurt. We want these guys performing at their best and their healthiest. But the way pitching has evolved, it's not like that. They have a certain shelf life, as you mentioned. And it's just really difficult for most pitchers to sustain long careers. You have to be successful. You have to stay healthy. And probably have a little bit of good luck on your side as well. Doing doing this research, talking to people, do you feel like the teams are doing this? Because I'm kind of sometimes a naysayer. I'm looking at maybe the, the negative part of this. Are they doing this research to say, whoa, hey, we're not we're not giving a pitcher a long term deal. And the reason is look at all this research. Look at all the research we have. Guys are gonna blow out. Anybody that throws this sweeper this hard. This change up this hard is going to blow out. Don't go over five years because there's a chance during that time he's going to miss a season for Tommy John. Eric, that should not be the intent of this study. That should not be what this is all about. What this should be about is injury prevention. There is an economic component to everything in the game. We know this. We talk about it quite frequently. I don't believe teams are seeing that way. Seeing it that way, Dr. Keith Meister basically said. He's talked to agents about this very phenomenon, and he understands that there is an economic thing going on, and maybe it's the next man up mentality, and teams feel they can just cycle through arms. His point was there aren't enough arms to go around, and John Smoltz has made that point on many Fox broadcasts where we've been together. I would agree with that. You can't just keep blowing people out. It, there's not that many great arms in the world to sustain the – turnover that's going on in our game every single year. That said, it's undeniable that if you have a bunch of up-down guys, guys you send to the minors, you just keep cycling them through and cycling them through, those are not players getting paid. Now, here's the interesting part of it for me, a paradox, and this might be another story down the line. Pitchers aren't being developed to last in both durability and within the course of a game, right? We see more five-inning starters than we've ever seen before. And yet, who gets paid? Aaron Nola got paid. Why? Because he's an innings guy. Zach Wheeler got paid. Why? Because he's an innings guy. Blake mm -hmm. Snell's still out there. Now, I'm not going to oversimplify it and say that's the reason. There are other reasons as well. But it's almost as if the game is talking out of two sides of its mouth. Won't let 
minor league pitchers develop durability within a game, might, might not extend them during a game, and yet that's who they value at the end of the day. Well, if you value that, develop that, and maybe you even get it before they're free agents. How about that? Preach. Did, that, that's, a great, that's a great point. Did you, in, in all this, did you come across anybody that admitted to the fact that it is way easier to teach velo? People have never pitched before and know how the body mechanically works is way easier to teach than command. It didn't come up in the course of these conversations, Eric, but certainly that is a verity of the game, right? It's something that we know to be true, that you can accelerate velocity perhaps better than you can accelerate command or improve velocity in a better way than you can improve command. My colleague on this story, you know, Saris, has written extensively about all of these kinds of things. And that's a problem in a way because command almost should be number one. It gets back to that location discussion I was bringing up earlier, how if location can erase some of the gap between great stuff and not, well, maybe we need to teach location better, we being the sport of baseball. I don't have the answers here. I'm not pretending I have the answers. The one thing I was satisfied with this article that it accomplished, I believe, is that it got people thinking. And hopefully people see this and they might not agree with every point Dr. Keith Meister made. They might not agree with the points that some of the other people made. But this is a huge topic. It's always a huge topic. Every year we talk about this. And at some point, it just seems to me the sport has to find a way to get to a better place. Last question for me. Are you like shocked right now? Or, or no, are baseball people shocked right now that Monty and uh, Snell haven't been picked up. I mean, it's just it's just ongoing and ongoing. I mean, what have you been hearing? This is just it's insane to me to see all these big names that are still out there that don't have a job. I don't know that people are shocked at this point, Todd. It's been dragging on all winter, so it's not like it's you're waking up in the morning and it's hitting your face. Wow, what a surprise! Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery aren't signed. They haven't been signed since November first. Mm. So I don't know that I see it that way, and. I would say that it's alarming that they're not signed at this point. It's March 8th, and I know Scott Boris will tell you, well, these guys are training at my training institute. They're fine. They're doing everything a normal pitcher in spring training would do, throwing bullpens, live batting practice. No, they're not performing in game-like situations. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying Grapefruit League and Cactus League games are the end-all, be-all, but you guys know this, and I'll ask you guys both. There is a certain part of conditioning in spring training that simply involves standing on the field in spikes. And yeah. maybe these guys are doing that, but there's something to that. And it's part of it. And I don't know that they're getting it the same way that the players here are getting it. They were getting the conditioning in the same way. It just doesn't seem to me that that's very likely at all. So now we are, what, three weeks away, a little bit more from opening day. You're looking at a situation where they may not be ready to go opening day, or they might not be as good as they should be opening day, which is a bigger concern because they're going to get paid. Not a great situation. Yeah, well, maybe next week, but I've been saying that for months. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, thank you. Enjoy some camps over the weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball, the way it should be covered. 